What's up guys, Isaac checking in and we just smashed 3,000 motherfucking subscribers on the channel. Thank you everyone who subscribed. And I'm gonna do a quick question and answer. And I'm gonna start off with my personal Facebook group, which you guys can join too if you haven't already joined. I'll put a link in the description or a link in the comment section or somewhere and you can be part of the action. Okay, first question, Josh Zhu. I'm not sure if I spell and pronounce that right. What, when was the turning point in your life that made you committed to self-improvement and actualization? That's a good question. Um, I started getting interested in it when I started university, when I was around age 19. Well, I probably was in it before that, but around age 19 was the turning point when my brain started putting two and two together when I actually started seeing tangible results from the work that I was putting in to self-improvement to the results. At age 19, that's when I, actually age 20 is when I started my blog. See, I had the mindset going in that now life was in my hands. Self-improvement was a vehicle to allow me to get the uh, tools and things necessary to achieve my goals. So. If I wanted to become incredibly successful and financially wealthy, I could do that if I put the time in. If I wanted to become really good with women and super confident, I could do that if I put the time in. If I wanted to be a really good tennis player or some shit, I could do that. All these things are what self-improvement is, embodies it. So when you start seeing, when it starts clicking in your head that everything is in your control and that you get results depending on how much work you put in yourself, that's when you start getting addicted and start getting committed to it. So age 19 was probably the time when I started committing myself to self-improvement, self-actualization. Simland, what's your morning routine like? Okay, if I get the morning routine right, which I don't always do, but if I do it properly, my morning routine is I wake up, I, of course, brush my teeth, I read, for about an hour. So I read from my iPad or a physical book for about an hour. I then take a cold shower. Not always, but when I had everything dialed in, I took a cold shower. Go back and then meditate for 20 minutes. And then I would start working on a YouTube video or start writing or start doing some work that's gonna to contribute to the growth of the channel. So that was my morning routine that I actually practice for a couple of weeks. I need to get back into it. I'm kind of fucking up in the sense that I'm not doing the cold showers anymore and my meditation game is eh. But we'll get back to that. Philip Gezelbash. Gazelle. Philip Gazelle. What has been your favorite part of the journey of online entrepreneurship so far? Well, in terms of online entrepreneurship, I haven't really been making, or well, haven't really dived balls deep into it, but I do have plans to make courses in the future. So far, I've been content marketing. I've been putting out a lot of content in the form of these videos, in the form of blogs, um, Quora answers and stuff of that nature. So I've been helping out people in that way. And I really like the effect, I'm, the impact I'm making on some people's lives, right? It um, makes me feel fulfilled. I also like, the sense that the the feeling of what's the word is it independence or autonomy i like having choices no one tells me how i should go about my youtube channel no one tells me about how i should go about my blog it's not like a job where you get a set amount of money for a set amount of hours and regardless of how well you work or how poor you work you don't have that much room for improvement with online entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship in general, you kind of set your own pace. So you can decide to work really hard one day or you can decide to chill out. You can decide, depending on how much work you put in, you can make $20 in a month or you can make $20,000 in a day. It's up to you. So I like the ability to have that freedom to navigate and knowing that it's completely up to me because I've seen a lot of people lose their jobs because of perhaps the market or politics or whatever, and they lose their income because of someone else's choices, not their choices. 
I don't want to ever have to face that. I want to be able to know 100% that every choice I made is because of me and to stick with it. Zachary Babcock, who do you, why do you do what you do? This is kind of similar to um, the answer I gave to Philip. It gives me a sense of fulfillment. A lot of these things that I teach on this channel in regards to confidence, in regards to mentoring your um, mental world, I didn't really have anyone to teach me how to find this information. So I've always wanted to have a place where I can go where someone can give me the blueprint. So I'm trying to make this channel that for some people that are lost, some people that have low self-esteem, so that when they come to this channel, they know that every video they're going to get something that's going to help them on this path of sexual self-actualization. That's something that's going to help them level up in many ways. So that's why I make this channel. It's fulfilling and also there's a lot of room to navigate, a lot of freedom. I can be creative in terms of videos. I can be conservative. I can talk about whatever the fuck I want to talk about. I can swear. It's beautiful. Fucking someone's calling me. Hold on. Yo. Oh, I'll be yours in uh, two minutes. Oh, shit. Okay, hold up. All right. See you soon. Oh, yeah. I need to take a shower. There you don't. Yeah. I'm like right in the front of yours right now. Bullshit. I'm at the front, cunt. <laughs> All right, I'll see you. All right, I'll see you. Sorry about that, guys. I actually had to go to the gym, and I'm back now, so we can continue these motherfucking questions. All right. So, who asks, what are your morning erections like? Well, I've got one word. Glorious. I'll go over to the Instagram questions now and see what people are asking over there on the gram. Just in the Facebook group. Okay, here we go. First question on Instagram. How do you find inspiration? I'm assuming, and that's by Anas, Anas Tai, Anastasia. Sorry about the pronunciation. How simply how do you find inspiration? Well, for my videos, I draw inspiration from lessons I've learned in life, or so the things that I'm learning or reading about. Every day I'm always inputting some new information into my mind via audiobooks, via books, via courses, via all kinds of different mediums. So I draw inspiration from those things. And the way I go about being creative is usually through meditation. Before I meditate, I set the goal of achieving something. And when I start meditating, these ideas start coming to me. Also, while I'm in the shower, that's a really good time to be creative and get some inspiration. Okay. K. Art Alice. Fuck. You people have some weird names here on Instagram. Long time without posting. Keep up the good content. I'm excited to watch the video. Here's my question. What do you think about chaos in your life? Chaos. That's actually a really good question. I believe you have to embrace the chaos. I recently read a book about called Anti-Fragile by Nassim something or other. And basically he says that there's three different things in the world. There's things that are fragile. These are things that break under chaos. Perhaps, you know, a box, um, glass, your grandma. These are all things that are fragile. The things that are robust. Things that are built to last and sustain the chaos. And then there are things that are anti-fragile. Things that get better with chaos. I try to be anti-fragile. So taking a stoic approach, whenever something bad happens, I'll try to find the good in it. Or as 50 Cent says, turn shit into sugar. I try to find how the chaotic or the chaos that's brewing can benefit me. What can I benefit from the situation? How can this better me? So I like chaos. I like it when things aren't going according to plan because it allows me to step up. It allows me to develop my faculties and become better. So that's how I deal with chaos. I look at dead in the eye and say, fuck yeah, come over here. 
Okay, next question by John Poza O. How can we find our motivation in us to do stuff that we must do to grow or live? For example, study a language for a test in school, but we're just too busy and unmotivated to do it. Thanks, man. And oh, where are you going to answer? Okay. How can we find motivation to do things that we know we need to do, but don't necessarily want to do? This is basically what his question is saying. Well, the thing is, you don't need motivation. I said this in another video the other day. Motivation is cheap. It's fleeting. It goes away. You don't need motivation. What you need is discipline. And you need to have the end in mind. You need to understand why you're doing something. And also you need to make that thing the utmost importance. So, for example, you want to study a language. You need to study a language for tests in school. Think of the end in mind. Why? Are you going to school in the first place? Perhaps it's to get your degree. Why do you want your degree? Perhaps it's to get a particular job that you want. Why do you want that job? So that you have enough money coming into your life to sustain your dreams and aspirations. So when you think of the end with the end in mind, all the small minute things that you do in between start to have meaning. You start to take them more seriously. It's only when we don't think about the end and we see the thing in front of us that we get demotivated, that we you know, get lazy. So always have the end in mind and always try to build your discipline. Because if you build discipline in one area of life, it kind of trickles over to other areas. And then you end up just being disciplined in whatever you attack, whatever you approach. Make that part of your ego. Make it that you are someone who stays true to their word. Someone who does things that are good for them regardless of how they feel about them. Who gives a fuck if you don't like it? Think about the end. It's going to be worth it at the end. That's right. Remember what Aristotle said? Something about excellence is not a habit or some shit. Excellence is a habit. Okay, I completely just butchered that point. But, yeah, think of that. What's next? Boy under the bridge. My front dealt is lacking. What to do? So you can see my front door's not lacking. Uh, train it. Ooh, next. Deliquescence. Deli. Deliqua. Deli. Deliquesce. If you could interview anyone for your YouTube channel, who would you choose? And what's the most important question that you would ask them? It's a really good question. If I could interview anyone, I probably would interview Arnold Schwarzenegger because there's lots of people that become successful in one area in life. There's people that become successful in acting, there's people that become successful in politics. There aren't too many people that become successful in multiple areas in life. Arnold Schwarzenegger has become successful in bodybuilding. He became successful in acting. He became successful in politics. He's also an entrepreneur. So someone who is able to master four different areas of their life will be someone who I would love to interview. And what question would I ask him? A very simple question. I would ask him, if he had to choose one thing or one key, what would he say was the most determining factor that led to his success? Was it a mindset? Was it something he did? Was it, um, you know the people he associated with, I would ask him that question. What is the number one thing that contributed to his success if he had to point out? So I would fire your question back on him. All right? So if anyone knows Arnold, please tell him to come on the channel. Please. And I think that's it. Those are all the questions. We'll have another Q&A next time. Hope you guys enjoyed that more videos on the way soon. Thank you.